And um, we were in the middle of a story yesterday about my niece and uh, I need to finish it. As I Uh, shared with you yesterday just as Sharon was leaving the Lord gave me something for her I did not know that that was what she needed the Lord just impressed me to tell her to go home and sit at the feet of Jesus and spend time to get to know God. She went home. Two months later, she phoned me She said, Auntie, I have been doing what you told me to do. My whole heart and mind have been drawn to Jesus. And I don't even care about sin anymore. Who had brought her to repentance? The Holy Spirit. God did. Because she listened and did what she needed to do. She allowed God time to work on her heart. Unless you know God, how can you give your whole life to Him? You would not trust Him with your life. And that is why it is so important to spend time with the Word. Then immediately, she started witnessing to her friends. What God had done in her life. Her mother phoned me. Her mother said, what Sharon has learned, I want too. Will you come to our place and share with us? If I pay your way, remember I was praying that God would have them call me and would offer to pay my way. And then another brother called. And he said, Margaret, I hear you are coming as far as uh, Anne's place. I also want to hear what you have been studying. Will you come as far as our place if I pay the rest of the way? And so I went to all my family. As I shared with them how to find a real living connection with God, and remember that I said, Lord, me, 
speak in the church. I was very shy. I did not do public speaking. And I said, Lord, I know I have found something real in Christianity. И казах, Господи, аз знам, че съм открила нещо истински ценно в християнския си живот. And if you want me to speak in the church, и ако искаш аз да го споделя в църквата, will you take away my fear? Можеш ли да премахнеш от мен страха ми? And will you lose my tongue so I can share? И да развършиш езика ми така, че да мога да говоря? The very next morning I had the church service. На следващата сутрин беше службата в църквата. And I just shared statements and texts that I had brought for my family. И аз просто споделих с тях текстовете и цитатите, които бях открила докато изучавах Библията за помогна на семейството ми. I didn't have it all organized the way I have it now. Не бях организирала и подредила всичко това. But the people said we want another meeting in the afternoon. And then they wanted another meeting in the evening. And at the end, the minister came to me and he said, Mrs. Davis, I have tried and tried to understand righteousness by faith. Толкова съм се опитвал да разбера какво е това праведен живот чрез вяра. I just couldn't understand it. Просто не може и да го разбера. There has been much confusion among our people as to what is righteousness by faith. Защото в църквата наистина имаше противоречия по този въпрос какво е правда чрез вяра. But he said now I see it. И той тогава каза, сега вече виждам нещата. Now I too can surrender my heart to God. И аз мога да предам сърцето си на Бога. And I said, thank you, Lord. И аз благодарих на Господ. And if you want me to go and share, и му казах, Господи, ако искаш да продължа да споделям това, here I am. Ето тук съм. And so I'm still here. И аз все още съм тук. 31 years later, I'm still sharing. And the Lord is good. He gave Sharon repentance. Repentance means turning from your sins. Turning to God and turning away from your sins. И да погледнем към Бог. In Proverbs 28:13 we read. В притчи 28 глава 13 стих четем. He that covers his sins shall not prosper. Този който прикрива греховете си няма да преуспее. But who confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. Но който ги изповяда и ги изостави ще има милост. You do not just confess your sins. You give them to Jesus. You give up the right to do them anymore. That's what it means to come to Jesus with confession. We are now on step three. Това е третата стъпка от нашия път. Confess and forsake your sins. Изповядай и остави зад себе си греховете си. This is a very important step. This is where you go all the way with Jesus. Ето тук се взема решението да продължиш да вървиш през целия този път с Исус. And when we come with all our heart to Jesus, then he can do what he needs to do. He can cleanse 
and give us a new heart. Christ is able to save to the uttermost all who come to him in faith. He will cleanse them from all defilement if they will let him. But if they cling to their sins, they cannot possibly be saved. <coughs> For the righteousness of Christ covers no sin. Unconfessed and unforsaken. He asks for the whole heart. How can he create a new heart and a new mind? If we do not give him the old heart. He says, give me your heart. Then I can make it new. But many people do not understand. And the, they give him this sin. And this sin. But never the heart. And Jesus stands knocking. Let me in. And they think he just wants another sin. No, he wants them. He wants you. And if you give your whole heart, you give him all your sins. И ако му поделите цялото си сърце, той ще получи всичките ви грехове. The Bible says in Ephesians 4:22-24. Библията казва в Ефесяни 4 глава от 22 до 24 стих. Put off your old nature which is which belongs to your former way of life. Откажете се от старата си природа, която принадлежи на стария ви начин на живот. And be renewed in the spirit of your minds. And put on the new nature. Which is created in the likeness of God. In true righteousness and holiness. It's a new creation. And the Bible says all things are become new. You then hate sin and you love righteousness. But many people do not experience that. Много хора не са преживели това. They just struggle with their sins. Те продължават да се борят с греховете си. But the Bible says in Romans 6:11. Но Библията казва в Римляни 6 глава 11 стих. We must consider ourselves dead to sin and alive to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Че трябва да умрем за греховете си и да възкръснем за живот в нашия Господ Исус Христос. How do you die to sin? Как можем да умрем за греховете си? When I was trying to understand these things, когато се опитвах да вникна в тези неща, I said, Lord, how do I die? Си казах, Господи, как така да умра? And Gradually I understood. If you are dead and you are lying in a coffin how many rights do you have to sin? 
имаме ли някакво право, може ли да съгрешим, да съгрешаваме? You've given it all up. Всичко е приключило. You have no rights anymore. Вече не можем да, да грешим. If I come to you, ако дойда при такъв а, мъртъв човек, and I say bad things about you, и почна да му говоря лоши неща, and I even slap you, и дори го зашевя, what will you do if you are dead? Вие какво бихте направили, ако бяхте на място на този човек? You will do nothing. Нищо. That's what the Bible means. Ето това uh, разбираме тук в Библията. It says consider yourselves dead to sin. Тогава когато започнем да uh, да считаме себе си за мъртви за греха. But you are not supposed to stay there. Разбира се, не буквално. You are supposed to come alive to God. От нас се иска да заживеем отново в от нас се иска да заживеем отново в Бог. And if you come alive to God, и когато дойдем живи при Него, and Christ is dwelling within you, и когато Христос заживее вътре в нас, and His love is pouring into your heart, и Неговата любов се излива в сърцата ни, and I come to you, и аз дойда при вас, and I say all bad things about you, и започна да ви обвинявам, да ви говоря неприятни неща. What will you do? Какво ще направите тогава? You will love me. Просто ще ми отвърнете с любов. You will be kind to me. Ще бъдете мили към мен. You will pray for me. Ще се молите за мен. Because you know I need help. Защото виждате, че аз се нуждая от помощ. You see, it's a total mind change. Виждате, че настъпва едно пълно преобразяване на начина на мислене. You will love your enemy. Ще почнете да обичате враговете си. You will do good you. Ще вършите добро на онези, които ви мразят и ви презират. That's what it means to be dead to self and alive to God. Това означава нашето аз да умре и да заживеем чрез Бог и за Бог. But the whole heart must be surrendered. Но цялото сърце трябва да бъде предадено, предоставено на Бог. God will not occupy a divided heart. Бог няма място в едно раздвоено сърце. He will not share your heart with Satan. Той не би искал да поделя сърцето с Сатана. And as long as you want to hang on to sin, и uh, когато се опитвате да се придържате към греха, as long as you want to keep a wrong attitude towards someone in the world, колкото повече продължавате да се отнасяте uh, неправилно към or your друг, family, в, към хората около вас или в семейството ви, Jesus is not there. Исус няма да бъде в сърцето ви. He knocks at the door. Той хлопа на вратата. Because the new birth changes your attitude. Защото новорождението променя нашата нагласа. He takes away your sins. Той отнема от нас греховете ни. That's what's involved. Ето това е смисълът на на преображението. Let's think of a little example. Нека сега да вземем един малък пример. Jesus is the bridegroom. Исус е младоженецът. We are the bride. Ние сме невестата. All right. Let's think of a young man in this audience who is not married. Да вземем за пример млад човек в църквата, който не е оженен. And he wants a wife. И иска да се задуми. And so he finds someone. И така той открива някого. He really appreciates. Наистина цени този човек. And she loves him too. Тя също го обича. And then he says, И тогава той казва, Will you marry me? Прави предложение, ще се омъжиш ли за мен? And she says, И тя обръща, I love you very much, Много те обичам, But I also love this other one. Но обичам и този мой приятел. 
What will the young man say? I'm sorry. I don't want to marry you. Jesus is the bridegroom. He is not double-minded. As long as we want to serve Satan, we are not married to Christ. He has to first change your heart. Humble yourself before God. Confess, <coughs> confess your sins to him. And we read in 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. We have now come to the foot of the cross. We have repented and we are right here at the foot of the cross. We are in the outer court of the sanctuary experience. That is where you are justified and born again. They are, they are the same. You come to the altar of sacrifice. You give yourself and all your sins to Jesus. He forgives you. He cleanses you. And then he works in you a new heart. A new mind. The new birth is represented by the labor. When, when the soldier pierced the side of Jesus, as he was hanging on the cross, What came out? Blood and water. It's very important. Two streams. You need both to save you. We read in early writings 209. The blood was to wash away the sins of those who should believe in his name. And the water was to represent that living water. Which is obtained from Jesus to give new life to the believer. It's not just the baptismal water. It's the water of life to wash you into a new person. You can be baptized but not be changed unless you have surrendered all to Jesus. We read in Titus 3, 5 and 
Четем в Тит, трета глава, пети и осми стих. This is one of your important texts for justification. Това е един от ключовите текстове, в които се говори за оправдание. Not by works of righteousness which we have done. Не чрез праведните дела, които сме извършили. But according to his mercy he saved us. Но според милостта си той ни спаси. How did he do it? Как го е направил? It tells us. By the washing of regeneration. And renewal by the Holy Spirit. Which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ. So that being justified by His grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is what needs to happen at the foot of the cross. That is why Jesus said, except you are born of water, And of the Spirit, you cannot see the kingdom of God. <clears throat> you must be born again. Then you can enter the sanctified life. Sanctification is living a life of holiness. Освещението означава да живеем свят живот. We read Четем In uh, Mount of Blessing 114 В планината на блаженствата 114-та страница Forgiveness Прощението Has a broader <coughs> Excuse me <coughs> Forgiveness has a broader meaning than many suppose. God's forgiveness is not just a legal act. It is not only forgiveness for sin but reclaiming from sin. Това не е прощение на греха, но възстановяване от греха. It is the outflow of redeeming love that transforms the heart. Приливът на изкупителната любов преобразява сърцето. David had the true understanding of forgiveness. Давид е разбирал истински значението на прощението. He prayed. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. There's your th- and your feelings. A new creation. That is why the thief on the cross was ready for heaven. That is why the thief on the cross was ready for heaven as soon as he surrendered. He had experienced the new birth. And then he even had to live in terrible pain for hours afterwards. И въпреки, че след това агонията му продължи, he was tested. той беше подложен на изпитание, he was faithful. но остана верен. The disciples doubted as they were watching Jesus. Учениците, които се бяха събрали в подножието на кръста, се съмняваха. But the thief did not doubt. Но крадецът беше напълно убеден. It was the only blessing Christ had 
on the cross. Това беше единственото благословение, което Христос имаше на кръста. All the disciples disappointed him. Защото всички негови ученици го разочароваха. <clears throat> you know, sometimes people say, Знаете ли, понякога хората казват, The thief could go to heaven just like he was. Престъпникът е можел да отиде в небето такъв какъвто е бил. No. Съвсем не. He surrendered. Той първо е предал себе си, отказал се от себе си. And he even saw the light come down from heaven, his acceptance with God. И когато той прие Бог, той е видял как небесните порти се отварят пред него. He had, um, and we are told that he was saved to the uttermost. И казваме и четем, че той е бил спасен изцяло напълно. And now we want to go through the sanctuary message. Нека сега преминем през веста за светилището. In just one text. В един единствен библейски текст. The whole gospel in one text. Цялото благовестие е събрано в един единствен текст. Romans 6:22. Римляни 6 глава 22 стих. I want you to look at the sanctuary. Погледнете към графиката на светилището. We will go through it several times. И няколко пъти ще се спрем на нея. Now that you have been set free from sin, и сега, когато сте освободени от греха, and have become slaves of God, и сте станали uh, Божи слуги, the return you get is Fruit of holiness, sanctification. Наградата, която получавате, е плодът на святостта, освещението. And its end, eternal life. И нейната цел, вечен живот. All right, let's look at the sanctuary. Нека сега погледнем към светилището. At the altar. Пред алтара. Of sacrifice. Жертвения алтар. You are set free from sin. На този отар ние сме освободени от грех, освобождавани Бог от греха. At the laver, при умивалника, you become a child of God, a slave of God. Ставаме Божии чада и Божии слуги. A new birth. Това е нашето новорождение. You are not a slave of Satan any longer. Повече не служим на Сатана. You now belong to God. Защото вече принадлежим на Бог. And then you go into the holy place ministry. Тогава влизаме в светая, which is called sanctification. Този процес се нарича освещение or fruit of holiness. Или плодът на светостта. All the power of heaven is available for you to live the Christian life now. Цялата небесна сила се излива е достъпна за вас сега, за да започнете един християнски живот. And living the fruit of holiness is the work of a lifetime. И да живеем живота на святостта, за това е необходимо цял един живот. And the end и накрая, в края is eternal life. Ние получаваме вечен живот. You are judged in the most holy place Нашият съд ще бъде в светая светих. To have eternal life. И там ще получим вечен живот. Let's read the verse again. Нека още веднъж прочетем този стих. Now that you have been set free from sin. И сега, когато сте освободени от греха. And have become servants of God. И сте станали Божии слуги. The return you get is fruit of holiness. Наградата, която получавате, е плод на святост and its end, eternal life. и накрая вечен живот. You are now connected with the vine. Сега сте свързани с лозата. Jesus is the root. Исус е коренът. The Holy Spirit is the sap coming up into the little branch. Святия Дух е сокът, който тече в малките клони. 
producing the fruit of the spirit. Който произвежда плода на духа. This is your covering. Pardon? This is your covering, your garment. Това е вашата дреха. This little branch is naked. Ето това малко конче там е гол, не покрито. You now have Christ in you, the hope of glory. Сега вече имате Исус вътре в сърцето си, надеждата на славата. Before he was knocking at the door. Преди той да похлопа на вратата на сърцето ми. He was not inside. Той не е вътре в сърцето ми. Self was inside. Преди той да похлопа, ваш, вашето аз е било вътре в сърцето ви. You must step down. Трябва да коленичите. Your heart cannot have two masters. Трябва да отстъпите, защото сърцето не може да има двама господари. Either Jesus is Lord of your life or you are. Или Исус е господар на живота ви, или вие сте господари. And if you are Lord, Satan is right there with you. И ако вие изберете сами да управлявате живота си, Сатана ще бъде винаги до вас. We must choose our master. Трябва да изберем на кого да служим. What is sanctification? Какъв е смисълът на освещението? It is to give yourself completely to God. Това означава изцяло да се предадем на Бог. To deal justly. Да вършим правда. To love God with all your heart. Да възлюбим Бог с цялото си сърце. To be pure. Да бъдем чисти. Unselfish. Не се прелюбиви. Holy. Святи. And without spot or stain. И без петно и бръчка. No defects of character. Не се допустими никакви несъвършенства в характера. What is a defect of character? А какви бяха тези несъвършенства? Anger. Гняв. Envy. Завист. Jealousy. Ревност. Hatred. Омраза. Irritation. Раздразнение. Bitterness. Огорчение. All those things are defects of character. Всички тези чувства са слабости на характера. They cannot be in the heart if Jesus is in the heart. И ако Исус е вътре в сърцето ни, за тях няма да има повече място там. You see, even a child can understand that. Дори едно дете може да го разбере. And Jesus can take those away. Исус може да снеме от нас Цялото това бреме. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Ето Божият гнев, който понася греховете на света. I had some wrong attitude toward my husband. Аз също съм имала, съм съгрешавала против съпруга ми. Because of the way he was handling the children. Поради начина, по който той възпитаваше децата. And we had many discussions about this. Имахме много разговори за този проблем. And I knew when I studied these things that I could not excuse that wrong attitude. And so I came to the Lord. And I said, Lord, I want to die to sin. I don't want any wrong feelings in my heart. Here, Lord, take them all. Here is my irritation with the children. Ето, тук е моето раздразнение към, към децата. Here is my impatience. Моето нетърпение. And if you have a hundred sins, say, Lord, here, and you name them. И без значение колко грехове имате, предоставете ги на Исус. I even held out my hands like this. I said, Lord, take them. Аз дори протегнах ръцете си по този начин. И казах, Господи, приеми ги. My worst sin was my wrong attitude toward my husband. 
Най-големият ми грях беше uh, отношението ми към съпруга ми. Because it was sitting there for 20 years. Защото в продължение на 20 години това беше заседнало в сърцето ми. Not because he was mean to me. Не защото той се държеше лошо с мен. But he was selfish with the children. Но той беше егоист към децата ни. And I said, I give up my right. И казах, Господи, предоставя, отказвам се от to resent my husband. От моето негодование спрямо съпруга ми. No matter what he does. Без значение какво прави той. We must do that. Всеки от нас трябва да направи това. You cannot make reservations for sin. Не можем да задържаме да имаме резерви спрямо греха. No matter what people do. Без значение какво правят хората. Why should we use Satan's way to correct them? Защо да използваме дух, сатанински дух, за да ги поправим? We have to give up the right to use Satan's methods. Ние трябва да се откажем от правото да използваме методите на Сатана. And use God's ways. И да използваме Божиите методи. If we call ourselves Christians. Ако наричаме себе си християни. And I understood this at this point. И аз разбирах това много добре. And I gave it all to Jesus. И предадох всичко на Исус. And I believed he could cleanse me. И вярвах че той може да ме очисти. I believed he would accept me. Вярвах, че той ще ме приеме. This is also very important. Това също е изключително важно. When Jesus has promised, когато Исус обеща, number four, това е четвъртата стъпка, he will cleanse and give us a new birth. Че ще ни очисти и ще ни даде новорождение. Our part нашият дял is to believe. Е да повярваме в това. Is that hard? Не е трудно това. Yes, sometimes. Да, понякога. It depends how well you know Jesus. Зависи от това доколко добре познаваме Исус. We read in John 3:14 and 15. <coughs> As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So faith to believe what Jesus can do is very important. What was happening to the Israelites in the wilderness? God was leading them Бог ги водеше. He was protecting them. Той ги защитаваше. He was keeping back all harmful things from them. Той отстраняваше от тях всякакви опасности. And they grumbled. Но те роптаеха. And they grumbled. И роптаеха. Do you ever grumble? Роптайте ли вие понякога? The serpents will bite you. Змите може и да ви охапят. Да. Да. Grumbling brings the bite of the serpent. Защото роптанието може да ви доведе змийски зъб. God removed his protection. Бог отстрани от тях закрилата си. And out came the serpents and bit them. И те бяха нападнати от тези змии. And the people were dying. Хората загиваха. And they cried to God. And so Moses was told, put up this serpent. It represented Jesus being made sin for us.
so that he could save us. And if they would just look and believe that Jesus would take their sins upon himself, they could be made whole. Instantly. Many looked. Many jumped up and were whole. Others lay dying. They would not look. How foolish. They could see the other ones happy and well. And still they would not believe. It's the same way with becoming a Christian. Unbelief in what Jesus can do in the heart is our greatest sin. We read in Steps to Christ 49 You have confessed your sins and in your heart you have put them away. Here, Lord, you have resolved to give yourself to God. Now go to him and ask that he will wash away your sins and give you a new heart. Then believe that he, that he does this because he has promised. What if we don't believe? He cannot do it. We read also in Steps to Christ 52. Jesus loves to have us come to him. Just as we are. Just like Sharon came. She didn't have to overcome her sins before she came. She came with all her sins. God worked the change in her. Jesus loves to have us come to him just as we are. Sinful, Грешни, helpless, dependent, зависими. and fall at his feet in repentance. И да в при му. It is his glory to encircle us in the arms of his love. Когато ни прегърне в обятията на своята любов, to bind up our wounds to, to cleanse us from all impurity. You know what the next sentence says? Here is where thousands fail. They do not believe. That he pardons them personally. Just like Sharon said. Yeah, I now believe God can save anyone. But not me.
They do not take God at his word. Те не се доверяват на Божието, на Божието обещание. None are so sinful. Никой не е до толкова грешен. That they cannot find strength. Че да не може да намери сили. Purity. Чистота. And righteousness in Jesus. И праведност в Исус. He is waiting to strip them of their garments. Той ковне да ги съблече от дрехите на греха. Stained and polluted with sin. От дрехите, които са замърсени и отцапани с петната на греха. And put upon them his white robes of righteousness. И да ги облече с бялата си мантия на правдата. He bids them live and not die. Той ги моли да живеят, а не да умрат. It is a sad fact Това е наистина един много тъжен факт, that the great proportion of God's professed people че много голяма част от така наречения Божи народ have not had faith in Christ нямат тази вяра в Христос as their personal Savior. И не вярват, че Той е техен личен спасител. He came to save his people from their sins, not in their sins. This is our greatest need. Do not wait to feel that you are made whole. Come to the foot of the cross. Елате в подножието на кръста. Claim his promises. Пожелайте неговите обещания. Put your will on the side of Christ. Приковете волята си на кръста. And he will give you power. И той ще ви даде сили. He will strengthen you. Той ще ви даде, той ще ви подкрепи. Whatever may be the evil practice. Без значение Какви, uh, какви са били вашите деяния? Christ is able and longs to deliver. Христос е способен и купне да ви изкупи. He will set free. Той ще освободи every person from the chains of sin. Всеки един от веригите на греха. That's what he came for. За това той дойде. To free us and give us power to live the Christian life. За да ни освободи, да ни даде сили да живеем истински християнски живот. We read in Desire of Ages 173. Четем в книгата Животът на Исус, 173-та страница. When the Spirit of God takes possession of the heart. Когато Божият Дух започне да ръководи сърцето ни. It transforms the life. Той преобразява живота, живота ни. Sinful thoughts are put away. Грешните мисли са отхвърлени. Evil deeds are renounced. Злодеянията са са отхвърлени, са порицани. Love, любовта, humility, Смирението and peace и Божият мир take the place вземат мястото of anger, на гнева, envy, зависта and strife. и негодованието. There is an exchange. Тук става една замяна. Joy takes the place of sadness. Радостта идва на мястото на скръпта. No one sees the hand that lifts the burden. Никой не вижда ръката, която отнема от нас товарани. Or beholds the light descend from the courts above. Или пък успява да види светлината, която се излива от небесните дворове. The blessing comes when the soul surrenders itself to Christ. Благословението идва, когато душата напълно се предаде на Исус. Then, тогава, that power тази сила, which no human eye can see, 
Nizrima za nito ena čveško ko creates a new being in the image of God. Sotvorjava eno novo sozdanje po Božji obraz. This is what happened to the thief on the cross. And he even saw the light descend. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and 18, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Затова, ако някой е в Христа, той е ново създание. All things are passed away. Защото всички неща преминаха. All things are become new. И всичко стана ново. And this comes from God. Това е дар от Бога. Not of self. А не деяние на Аза. Those who receive the Savior become the sons of God. Онези, които получават и приемат Спасителя, стават Божии синове. They are His spiritual children. Те стават Божии духовни наследници. Born again. Родени отново. Renewed in righteousness and true holiness. Обновени в правда и истинска святост. Their minds are changed. Умовете им са преобразени. They are cleansed from all defects of character. And they have a new bent of the heart. They are bent to righteousness. The Bible talks about ето за това говори Библията. This is Christianity. Това е същността на християнството. We are now on this side of the cross. Сега се намираме от тази страна на кръста. The people on this side of the cross. Хората от другата страна. They are still carnal, sold under sin. Все още са плътски хора и тяхната душа е под властна на греха. They cannot obey the law of God. Те не, не могат да са послушни на Божия закон. Oh, outwardly, yes. Външно, може би да. But inwardly? Но в същността no. си, не. The carnal mind cannot obey the law of God, the Bible says. Плъцкият закон не може да съблюдава Божия закон, казва Библията. We must be born again. Трябва да се родим отново. You see, Romans 7 is on the other side. Това, за което се говори в Римляни 7 глава, Before Paul understood how to die to self, преди Павел да разбере как неговото аз да умре, как той да умре за аз си, He was trying to obey the law. He said, I see that the law is good. But I can't do what it says. That which I want to do, I cannot do. That which I don't want to do, I am doing. Него не върша. Wretched man that I am. Окая наш човек. Who will deliver me? Кой ще ме избави? And then he found the way. И тогава той. Thanks be to God. Той откри пътя. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Благодарение на Бога чрез Исус Христос, нашия Господ. And Romans 8 immediately follows. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. И веднага след това следва Римляни 8 глава, защото няма осъждение за онези, които са Исус Христови. Who walk not according to the flesh, които не вървят според плътта, but according to the spirit. А според духа. And that's what Jesus came to this earth to show us how to do. 
Ето, за това дойде Исус, да ни покаже какво да вършим. When Jesus came to this earth, когато Исус дойде на тази земя, He had sinful fleshly nature, той също беше облечен в греховна човешка природа, but he was filled with the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Но беше изпълнен с пълнотата на Святия Дух. He was over on this side. Той вече беше от тази страна. He didn't come with a carnal mind. И той не дойде, не стигна до там с плътски ум. He came to show these people how to be saved and then to have Christ in them, the hope of glory. Защото той дойде да покаже на непокаялите се как да бъдат спасени и как да имат надеждата на заславата. The Bible says he was made like his brethren in every respect. Библията казва той беше направен като братята си във всяко едно отношение. Who are his brethren? А кои бяха братята му? These are his brethren. Ето това са братята му. He did not call the Pharisees his brethren. Той не наричаше фарисеите свои братя. He said, you are of your father the devil and his works you do. Той каза, вие сте деца на баща си дявола и неговите дела вършите. And in Hebrews 2.11, а в Евреи 2 глава 11 стих, we read, четем, He who sanctifies, той който освещава, and those who are being sanctified, и тези които са осветени, are all of one. Всички принадлежат на един. They have been born of God. Те са родени от Бога. That is why he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Защо Исус не се срамува да ги нарече свои братя. You see, Jesus knows Виждате ли, Исус знае как да ни помогне да живеем християнски живот. Времето ни отново накъся. Утре вечер ще продължим. Утре вечер темата е изключително важна.